Hey everyone, the name's Eric Thor and I know it's been a while. I've been up in Lulio where the snow is and I have been with my girlfriend and I uh, We've been in uh, vacation mode. So tomorrow we're going to Edinburgh now, in today's video, I want to talk to you about intuition and sensing and what happens when an intuitive be boosts up, boots up their sensing function, beaming in sensory information, uh, diving into this world around us that we can touch, see, smell, hear, feel. I believe that uh, intuitives are differentiated from sensors by a unique response to sensory information, a unique way of experiencing sensory information. And yes, I know I've cut my hair, it's a little too short, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, give me a few days and it should be really good, I think. Anyways, intuitives have a interesting way to perceive sensory information in that for us sensory information feels a little too much. Uh, sensory information that goes beyond a certain intensity level for the intuitive becomes too much to the point where at least the introverts would definitely describe it as overwhelming in a sense that it becomes more than we can process, more than we can filter, more than we can comfortably deal with. I believe that intuitives perceive the world at a higher intensity level than the average sensor. And that this higher intensity level makes our glass fill up more quickly. We become in many ways uh, overwhelmed by sensory stimuli and uh, that means that we are more likely to want to tune out of it. When the glass fills up your mind decides it's time to start checking out lowering the light, lowering the sound, lowering the volume uh, making the situation less intense because the key word to an intuitive is to have senses that are keen to the max senses that can pick up on the sound of somebody's footsteps in the background the smell of something subtle far away what is that smell? The small visual perception of something where you only see half of what you are looking at and you're not quite sure what it is you're looking at. You want that muffled sensory experience, that subtle sensory experience, that experience that uh, of somebody touching you and who was it that touched you? Or that experience that is slightly mellowed or faded out. You want to have your head, your eyes, uh, half of your body below sea level, beyond what you can see with your sensory eyes, with your, uh, using purely your senses. And why do you want this? Why do intuitives want this? Because they want to tune in to this world of our imagination. To this world of intuition, of this world of complex figures and symbols and ideas and abstractions of reality. You want to have it so that you aren't seeing everything, only a third, and that you can read in what it is that is missing. You want to have that imaginative level of reality, that experimental level of reality that you can labor with, an abstract model, a replica of the world. Intuitives deal with some form of abstraction of reality, not reality itself. Intuitives care about patterns because we don't know where patterns will lead and that is the hook, that is what pulls us in, that desire to unravel that pattern to see what it leads to. 
Intuitives are driven by wanting to avoid that intensity of eternal repetition where you know what the pattern is going to do and you see it and you hear it over and over and as you hear it each time it becomes more intense. The more times you look at an object the more intense it becomes. That's how it is for an intuitive. The more you look at reality the more real reality becomes. It's like upon a TV screen. If you have a still image up for too long it starts to burn itself to the TV screen and when you shut the TV off you can still see the contours of the information. Sensory stimuli burns through our mind in a sense. It bombards us, it fills us up and it gets us from tuning out. When you are in the process of dealing with complexity, when you're trying to understand something abstract, when you're trying to imagine something, if your mind is on that level where it is uh, constantly clogged up with sensory stimuli, that keeps you from using your intuitive process. You can't tune out in a world where everything is constantly happening over and over. I think for the intuitive extrovert, there is nothing worse than an environment that is constantly looped over and over. Where you hear people repeat the same thing over and over. Where the five minutes, a past, five past minutes of your life are repeated eternally over and over again. And ENFP would always tell me repetition is hell. And why is it hell? And, but, and that's because of its uh, intense experience on the intuitive. The sensor can actually thrive on this. They thrive on understanding the information over and over because that means they can determine its accuracy and they can understand its full perspective. A sensory perceiving type, an extroverted sensing type, is always looking at information to see if something has changed. Yes, the chair is still there. Yes, the person is still there. Yes, the tennis ball is still there. Wait, no it's not. Why is it not still there? That is how the sensory person functions. For them this is not an intense experience. It's an experience that fascinates them. How long will reality continue to be like this? For how long will this moment last? For how much, uh, how much will I experience from this sensation? How strongly uh, can I make this touch? How, uh, how much can this smell? How much can I see? Can I see all of it? Not just uh, uh, poems of it, can, but can I see the, what it looks behind it and what it looks over it? And can I see, have the full experience of it where nothing is left out? The sensor makes sure that nothing is left out to the imagination. The sensor gives you all pieces of the cake, wants all pieces of the cake, wants nothing left out. Why did something, why was something left out? That's the question for the sensor. Why didn't I get all the information? When you look at it, sensing and intuition is a question of how you look at the world. Imagine volume buttons. 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 <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, volume buttons. Uh, and imagine that Intuitive has this volume button screwed up to the max. And imagine that the sensor has it at 50%. Imagine then that after a while the Intuitive leaves the room to a darker corner with less sound. And imagine then that the sensor goes closer to the sound because they want to hear all of it. Because they want that 100%. Where is that 100%? Imagine then that when the intuitive goes into this world of the imagination, where anything is possible, where you can dream up whatever you like, you can think logically, you can reason about the world and how it's structured and what its ideal shape is. Now imagine that 
the intuitive has this imagination world screwed down to 50%. And now imagine that the sensor has this world screwed out at 100%. So when this information comes into the sensor, that's when they get that full state of overwhelm. When the information, that abstract information is so much, and when those pictures are uh, so strong, and when the experience of this imagination, of intuition is so strong that you feel like, oh, I don't want this anymore. I want to tune out and I want to just live. I just want to be in the moment. I want the sensory experience. When you think about that, that's when you start getting down to the difference between intuitives and sensors. I believe that we have got to learn more about each other because it's not about intelligence, only one form of it. It's not about how good you are, only what you are good at. It's not about... Well, I guess it's about that we perceive the world differently. That <laughs> You could say that it's like a separate form of consciousness, a way of thinking about information. The sensor wants A, B, and C clearly spelled out. The intuitive ignores A, goes to B and C, puzzles them together, and then creates D. So the sensor has the A, the letter A that the intuitive didn't look for and didn't uh, ignored and tuned out of. The intuitive has the letter D. That hypothetical, abstract letter D that you would find if you thought logically, if you reasoned about B and C. I think that I might have repeated myself about this in the past, but I think that I'm still trying to understand the full scope of it. Because this also opens up the question of how the intuitive sensor looks like. How the sensory intuitive looks like. What happens if an intuitive ignores going into that dark room and continues dancing on this sensory world? What happens if they don't tune out, if they don't use their imagination, if they don't think logically, if they don't reason about the world, if they don't use intuition? What happens if the sensor doesn't get that sensory information? What if they don't get that uh, from that 50% satisfaction level to that 100%. What happens if their glasses are running half full? And what happens if the intuitive's glass is only half full? What happens if the intuitive's glass is completely overflowing and when it's so much? I, what I think is that the intuitive starts to lose perspective. I think that Overwhelmed for intuitive, and I think this happens to ENFPs and ENTPs as well, but I don't think they notice that it happens. When you are overfull of sensory stimuli, and this is going to happen to you eventually, you are going to lose the ability to fully process and understand what it is you are experiencing. When your mind has more information than it can tune out. It starts mixing things up. It starts hearing wrong. It starts thinking wrong. It starts seeing wrong. It starts uh, mixing things up, hearing sounds that aren't there, thinking things that aren't there, forgetting things, only hearing half the sentence. When the sense, when the intuitive is overwhelmed, it's like they enter, their grasp of reality starts to falter. They see reality, they are in reality, they are feeling it and the full thrill of it, but they are feeling more than what they can possibly deal with. And that is what overwhelm is. I think intuitives have to learn to realize what overwhelm is and to make sure you don't fall in the grasp of it, because when you start losing perspective, that's also when you start losing your temper, that's when you start worrying about things, that's where you start losing perspective. That's where you start losing your sense of clarity and vis uh, wisdom and insight. That which you need so much as an intuitive. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, share and subscribe. And as always, may your neurons be with you.